Welcome back legends, I hope you're all fantastic. On today's video, I want to show you the regular FM9, which I've been using for about the past year, and the brand new FM9 Turbo version. We're going to look at a couple of different presets on the same units just to show you the CPU savings you get from the Turbo version and what extra things I would add to a preset that would run on the FM9 versus the FM9 Turbo. Essentially, we've got a set of 450 megahertz processors in here versus 500 megahertz over here. So this can do slightly faster calculations. You can run blocks more efficiently and hence you can cram more blocks into a single preset. Now, for a lot of people, the FM9 is already the sweet spot in here. The turbo version arose out of the global semiconductor shortage. I'll put a link in the video description to a video that explains some of that over there. But essentially, the workaround was to use the slightly more powerful chips in here. And the plus side for users is that you have about 10% extra power in there. And this is going to manifests itself in different ways between different units. The architecture of the FM9 means that you can pretty much run two amps, cabs, two reverbs, two delays in every single preset, no matter what. The difference is going to be when we start allocating blocks like drive blocks and various time-based effect blocks, stuff like the plex delay and multi-tap delay. So let's dive straight into it. We'll look at a few factory presets and some custom presets that I have written. For example number one, I'm going to begin by tooting my own horn. This is my live preset from the Factory Banks Leon's Live FM9. It's set up to do what I like to do with Ragdoll, mostly centered around this USA lead mid-gain amp. There's some really lovely time-based effects and delays in there. There's also some pitch detune hiding right at the back here for those moments when I want that. And believe me, I often want that. So I'll give you a quick little run through of the first two or three scenes. You can see the CPU is hovering around 73.5%. <laughs> So I do have a little bit of wiggle room in here to add some things. One thing that I like to do is in the cab section using the cab preamp type. I particularly like the transformer type on high quality. If I add that, it does put me above 80%. I think this sounds pretty cool. It's pretty subtle. It's just adding a little bit of saturation in there. So I could add that and then basically nothing else. Let's turn that off. What if instead I wanted to say add a drive pedal at the start of all of this? Like I want to have this lead scene and maybe save a variation of it with a fuzz. Let's try that. We'll go drive number one and we'll put it on the face fuzz. This gets me to about 78, 79%. So again, I would have to be really careful with what I want to do if I wanted to add anything else except for this fuzz. This sounds really cool, by the way. One other effect that I quite like using on my axe effects is this particular delay sound with a rotary speaker on it. There's a few parts of certain songs from our Back to Zero album that use this particular rotary sound. If I just add the rotary block and it's basically just the stock settings that I use, again, this pushes me up to about 79%. <laughs> Let's take a look at Leon's Live on the FM9 Turbo now. Same preset, but you can immediately see that the CPU is running at around 66%. So 
I can probably add a few blocks to this now. What I'm going to do is add that rotary block that I wanted before. So we'll place that after the amp. Again, it's just the rotary at stock settings, nothing too special. And I am going to add that fuzz face in here. So I've got that. What I want to do now is I want to go to the scene manager and just make sure I've got these blocks engaged on the scenes that I want. So the rotary I just want on scene four, the drive I just want on scene six. So I'll bypass it in this scene. What I get now is I'm at 76%, so roughly around where I was on the non-turbo version, but I've got these two new blocks in here. So I've still got my big chunky sound. When I go to scene four, I'm gonna have the rotary speaker on. And when I go to scene six, I'm gonna have my fuzz on top of my really indulgent delays in there. Let's check it out. <laughs> Now this kind of sound is very much a want, not a need, but having the ability live to swap over to something like that, that has a slightly different character to my normal lead scene in say one or two songs is something that's just gonna add that little bit extra to the show. Let's check out another preset now. For example, number two, we'll take another factory preset. This is number 139, Joule Detune Delay. You can see that it's running at about 58% at the moment. It's making use of this Joule Detune Delay mode in the pitch block, and it sounds pretty glorious. <laughs> One cool thing about the architecture of the FM9 is that if I wanted to add a, another amp, I can do that without really impacting the CPU. I could also add another reverb or a pair of delays onto there. That's gonna be the same across the usual unit and the turbo, but let's say I wanna add a drive and a multi-tap delay block to this. So let's start off by adding this drive up front here. I'm gonna use the new BB Pre AT, just the stock settings, and then we'll use a multi-tap delay back here and I'm going to go with the 1210 mode for a sort of chorus I'll just bring the mix down on that one a little bit so now we're pushing that 78 percent mark so I could probably maybe add like a simple EQ to this or something else but I wouldn't really be able to say add a rotary speaker to it or anything else let's just hear this I think this sounds lovely <laughs> Like I said, if I want to get wild and add a big reverb on there, you know, I could add reverb block number two and let's put it on, say, the Ursa Major verb type. You can see that it's hardly touching the CPU over there. So we'll put Ursa Major in there. This is one of the pitched reverb types. I'll bring the mix up and now I have a pretty wild sounding preset. Again, this is on the non-turbo version. This is the same preset on the turbo. So what I do last time, I added the drive block with the BB Pre AT type on there. I thought that sounded really nice and smooth. And then I added the multi-tap delay for some 1210 style chorus. I think I turned the mix down again. So we've got that. You can see now I'm running at about 
70% on here. So it is lower than before. Again, the drives and things like the multi-tap delay belong to their own effects core on here. So they're just running more efficiently. <laughs> And just for fun, let's really push it here. I have added that pitched Ursa Major reverb. I'll bring the mix up on here. And I've also added a Plex delay. I'm right around 80% now. So I'm kind of pushing the limit, but this is gonna be a pretty amazing sounding ambient tone. I will also turn this delay block on here, which is basically doing like a short chorus style effect on there. This is a whole lot of fun. I'll bring the mix up on the Plex. Check it out. While we're here, I'll show you another variation of my live preset. This one just kind of stacks as much fun, greasy stuff in as possible. Still using the USA lead mid gain. We've got a multi-tap delay, a delay, a pitch block in there. I've got a ring mod and an envelope filter for some kind of like octave down, funky, squelchy wah stuff. I think scene six does that. So this one is a whole lot of fun. Check it out. <laughs> One thing I would like is the ability to have a compressor and maybe another EQ block in front of this clean amp over here. So again, we're on the non-turbo version. This is my clean sound at the moment. Loading the same preset into the turbo, you can see I'm at around 71%. What I wanna to do to this clean scene is I wanna make it a little bit more sparkly and a little bit more compressed. So I want a parametric EQ, kind of set up like a pickup simulator. I've done a video about this already on my channel that you can check out, and then I'll place a compressor before the amp. So let's do this. Let's split out before the amp over here. I will place the parametric EQ first in line. Again, my kind of pickup simulator. I've got this saved as a block in my library over here. So it's a pretty funky looking parametric curve but it takes us from kind of woofy sounding tone on the neck pickup to something a lot cleaner and brighter. Now a parametric EQ block doesn't really add that much. I could have added that to my previous preset, but the compressor is probably something I couldn't quite squeeze in to the other preset. Nice little pun about compression right there. So let's just go with say the JFET compressor type in here. Now I've got my compressed clean sound that I can use for like really chimey arpeggios in any sections like that. We get this.
what's cool about this is it takes me from almost being at a kitchen sink style preset to being at a kitchen sink style preset. I'll show you one more example. This is actually a base preset that is in the factory banks. The Axe FX3 version of this is kind of crazy and I managed to trim it right down for the FM9. The idea with this preset is you split the core tone of the bass up into three bands. You've got a band that is pretty clean for the low end. You've got a crunchy mid range and then a very distorted top end on here. It's all being processed by this multi-band compressor over here. It's running at about 80% on the normal FM9. On the turbo version, we're at around 70%. So if you wanted to do something like add a rat style drive in front and really, really make it sound gross or add an EQ after the compressor, you can do that as well. It's just gonna add that little bit of extra headroom in there for you to fine tune your bass tones on there. You know, running something like three drive blocks two amps, four filters, two compressors, two cabs, and a multiband comp is pretty impressive as it is, but the fact that you can add a little bit more to this on the turbo is pretty awesome. I'll give you a very, very quick little bash on this preset, and please excuse my bass skills. <laughs> Another very busy preset that runs about 80% on the non-turbo FM9 is this Jeff and Jan, or is it Jeff and Jan, or Jeff and Jan over here. Kind of like a synth guitar hybrid, two amp blocks, loads of different effects in here. Runs about 80%, like I said, on the non-turbo version. It's 71% over here. <laughs> I really must stress, both units run the same firmware, they have all the same hardware inputs and outputs, and all the features in all the effects blocks are present between both units. You are just getting slightly improved performance on the FM9 Turbo version, which, as I've hopefully demonstrated, can kind of manifest itself in the fact that you might be able to cram slightly more of your favorite sounds into particular presets. When it comes to playing live with the FN9, it means I really can just stick to this kind of master kitchen sink preset, which I appreciate. I appreciate simplicity live. Having said that, if you've got an original FM9, it is in no way redundant. There are still firmware updates rolling out, loads of new features like we've seen, the addition of new drive blocks and new effect types and new amp models, just like everything else in the Fractal ecosystem. These get updated fairly regularly and with some awesome new stuff. That's it for me for today. If you've got any further questions, let me know in the comments section. And if you wanna support what I do here on YouTube, there are some links in the video description which you can follow to do that. Hope you all have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.